This month's focus is on vegetable production. And in here is, uh, I have started a series of articles uh, on the ecology of uh, agriculture, eco-agriculture that we're doing. So I started writing articles, monthly articles for Acres USA, uh, addressing the ecological context of our farming and ranching operations. And being April, it's the uh, vegetable edition of the magazine. And succession, disturbance, and regeneration are, are critical to our understanding no matter what you're doing. But vegetables, annual vegetables especially, are the early succession um, crops in an ecosystem. When we would plow up a field at first, whether it was a heavy sod or you know, old corn stubble, uh, that first year, it's very coarse organic matter. It's you know only barely converted, uh, transitioned away from um, chemical agriculture. So the biology, soil biology, really isn't cranking yet. It's only three years in. So then we go ahead, would plow the ground, disc it all up, and plant the crop, and we go squash first because the squash and the pumpkins. Uh, they can really handle uh, heavier weed pressure, which you're going to have with new turn sod. And they can also really aggressively look for nutrients if it's not immediately right at their feet. As soon as that crop was harvested, I'd go and plant the field to rye. Uh, and through the winter, it'd be with winter rye. Then in the spring, maybe a couple weeks from now, maybe early May, I'd go ahead and disc the rye in. It's nice and green. It's a real quick release of nutrient. So then by the end of May, 25th, 26th of May or so, we could go ahead and now transplant peppers into that field. Um, it'll have some uh, decent fertility at first to kind of you know, boost that young little transplants that are in the ground. One of the things I wanted to show here, if you guys want to look at this, if we get the uh, camera here close up, this is, this is like the third year of uh, not reseeding it. The rye clover vetch mix three years ago. And then I mashed down the rye, <clears throat> all the clovers came up, and I mashed down the clovers, the rye came up, and that went through the winter. And this is the third time. Most of the rye is gone, but the hairy vetch is just everywhere. There's, there's a hairy vetch plant, you know, every six inches. So that's probably, you know, 80 to 100 pounds of nitrogen right there. So if this were, if this were to be um, plowed up. It's a pretty decent sod by now. This would be a great field for squash. Like and one of the advantages, this is all designed according to the master line protocol, water for any farm, blue book, acres USA. Um, all of this is gravity flow. And so we just open up in the winter time, open that up, open this up, and the whole thing drains all by itself. And so if it is buried just shallow, it won't freeze and burst the pipe. This, this. Is, this is an amazing site. So I grazed this farm last the whole season last year. I never saw any water in this. This was so the, it's nice to see water. This finally. is the point around which the whole entire farm is designed. The water <clears throat> used to go down that valley 600 feet away. It drops 100 feet and it's gone. Raging River. Well, now it comes down here, fills up, hits the overflows, and goes out towards the ridge, dropping at a 1% slope. It goes out and around. Look, look at this, look at this, look at this. Can you see, can you see the darker green band? The darker green yeah. band? Guess where I did Come look vegetables last. In a darker green band. It's or the lighter faint. green band. This dark, light, dark, light, dark, every six foot apart. That's where I would have band applied. That's calcium. Now calcium's not a nutrient, right? But there it is, you know, it's because it, it was, it was, had high magnesium, so that would have been gypsum. Uh, and or idafos, which is a, a calcium phosphate. So how is this spot, when you describe how you decided to install your permanent cropping system, is this off of your vegetable production? The design of the whole farm, the permanent production system, this happens to be dominated by chestnuts. Um, the water management pattern was first and foremost. We wanted to take any water from high on the, on the property and spread it out to the ridges and then we discharge it across the ridge. So this is a big horseshoe shaped uh, field that goes around and at the end of it there's a place where the water goes, fills up and it discharges across the end. Um, then the trees were planted 
on the downhill side of every swale. Uh, and then the alley between the trees is the way we did produce. So it wasn't that the produce drove where I put the perennial crops. It's the water management system determined where the perennial crops went, which is what then provided the alleys to grow the produce in between. And this has been everything from cilantro to bunched beets to cabbage to, you know, cucumbers and zucchinis and all that. So what is the key when you, inst what was the key to get these permanent crops uh, started while doing vegetable production here? What, what was mean, the pro what, like what did you do? Did you, did oh, you so it, plant them? So the this tree whole, tubes on them? Yeah, this whole thing would have been, you can see over here, there's a swale, then the berm, the trees, uh, another swale, berm, alley, swale, berm. That swale fills in because of tilling us through all those years. And then, this was, so this was all plowed, it was all plowed ground. And then we just transplanted, mechanically transplanted the trees in rows on the outside of the produce. So this is, you know, 20, <clears throat> so this is probably three years in. So this is probably 25 years worth of growth with these trees right here. So yeah, we're going through our kind of our pre-checklist, pre-season before we bring cattle on here, which we're kind of getting down to about a month away. And we're, we're greening up. It's a great time to look at fence lines and make a plan of attack. Anything about permanent crops that you would tie or you kind of wrap up that video with? Well, let's go with back with the permanent crops. Like we're saying here, we're working with seedling, uh, you know, uh, nut crops, not cultivars, not varieties. Each individual plant out here is its own variety. It's, it's genetically unique. And so these were very productive 25 years ago, the most productive in the upper Midwest. Times change. We're continually selecting for newer, higher yielding plants. It's time to renew this patch, not to get the same plant to come back, but to make way for the next ones. So we go ahead and we chip this right to the ground and we move over half a space with our next row. So that's part of the continuous improvement of our tree herd is to get rid of the ones that aren't producing as good as the, as the newest um, individuals. Your natural ecosystem. Yep, the main species of permanent crops that we're doing here are chestnuts, apples, hazelnuts, and we have pine nuts as well. Of course, then there's a lot of other ones. We've got hickories and walnuts, but the big three are, are hazelnuts, chestnuts, and apples. So when you do your, your consultations, that set of permanent crops changes, depending wherever, on where that person Wherever is. your location is, correct. You know, there's a specific set of perennials that are perfectly adapted to New Mexico. There's others that are perfectly adapted to Tanzania. There's other ones that are perfectly adapted to Alaska. Don't really try to push the envelope too much as far as climate is concerned. You know, I had a guy who wanted to grow um, peaches around here. Well, that's great. They will probably freeze to death in the wintertime. Yeah. Pick something else. Play with peaches on the side, but don't try to make it your enterprise in, in this region here. We don't recommend things. We present a range of options and you pick which ones you want to go with. <clears throat> uh, what I did here to overcome deer issues and to have the genetic selection of a wide a variety of genetics is high density. And then through time, some just fail to perform, others get eaten by deer, and others I cut down. So that's why I planted high density. However, other places, people may opt to put tree tubes on it. Yeah, all right, so that's permanent crops, this May issue. You'll be able to follow along all year with how we spice up New Forest Farm for cattle and tons of different operations. Any other thing you're going to, any cool thing else you're going to do this year? Just grow yep. trees? <laughs> grow trees. Hopefully we got uh, some pigs coming. And of course, like right now, I'm going to be getting out and do my top seeding um, where there's bald patches where the cattle have mucked it up. Get some good pasture mix on that. On the roads, put a DNR road seed mix to hold it in place. Oh, I've tried to move that. <laughs> um, and then on the asparagus patch, which we didn't walk over, um, put a uh, white clover on that. All right, follow along.